again, it's nerve wracking, but here we go. Um, I would like to start before I say anything. I would just like to ask Brother Randy to lead us in a prayer. Um, we prayed in the back, but I would like just so that everything that is said today is not my word, not my not my opinion, not what I have to say about the topic, but what the word has to say. So Brother Randy can lead us in prayer. Praise the Lord. Father, we're thankful for Brother Lewis's willingness to serve you. And Lord, he wants to speak forth your word. And Lord, we just pray that you give him the power of the Holy Spirit to speak your word with, with fire, Lord, that it would touch our hearts and change us and make us more like Jesus. For we just thank you in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, you guys can all remain seated. I am going to read from five different verses. Um, you guys can all stay seated. Uh, they're all familiar verses. I don't think there's anything new that I could have uh, found in the word that we haven't already read or heard of. Um, but the first verse is found in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Uh, further in the book of Matthew, uh, in the 24th book, um, 11 and 12, it also says, And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. Luke chapter 21, verse 11 says, There will be great earthquakes in, in various places, famine and pestilence. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 says, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving, Treacherous, reckless, <clears throat> swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, says, avoid such people. And the last verse is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been hearing about the second coming of the Lord for years. Years. Has got to be at least 30 plus years. You know, I'm in the 40 age uh, group range, you know. Um, but I do also know and recognize that for some of us, it's been even longer than that. I'm not saying that anybody's older than me, but we do have some uh, older folks. You know, since I was a kid, I, like I said, since I was a kid, I've been hearing of the last days. We will hear a trumpet, and Jesus will return for his bride, the church. Now, let me know if you've heard the same thing. Yeah. You guys have all heard the same thing, right? Praise God. God's word also tells us that no one knows the time or the day of that return. But he does warn us to be ready, like in the parable of the ten virgins where it says, be faithful, praying always, having your lamps trimmed and, bur and burning, and oil with you, that you may be ready for the coming of the bridegroom. Now, while our Lord doesn't give us the time, the date, he does give us what I call a treasure map, or clues, right? He gives us these clues to his eventual return. So we're gonna call those clues signs of the time. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that coincidentally is also the title of the message. Signs of the time. We see in Matthew 24, verse 6 and 7, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. 
Now, I recognize that in our days, we've seen a lot of wars. We've gone through a lot of wars. In my time, I've lived through uh, the Gulf War, right, Desert Storm, uh, the war in Afghanistan. Um, I know some of us were around for maybe World War II, maybe World War I. <laughs> maybe, maybe the Civil War, uh, the War of 1812, I don't know, but in all seriousness, our planet has seen its fair share of wars, but nothing like what we have today. I've never seen a time where there's been so much unrest among the people of this planet. We have more nations rising up as superpowers. We are seeing, the, we are seeing the people of nations fighting more and more amongst themselves. You know, I, I have walked down many streets where I hear neighbors arguing about their political standpoint, mm -hmm. arguing about what flag is flying in their yards. You know, and it's, to me, I've never seen so much of that, so much unrest, like on such a small scale. Like, we're, we're fighting and arguing about the smallest and insignificant things more and more these days. I, I don't know, it blows my mind. You know, but all this is a sign of the times. We see in Matthew uh, 24, 11, and 12, where it says, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray, and because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. Now, I watch a lot of documentaries, I watch a lot of videos, I watch a lot of stuff um, to, to kind of just increase my knowledge. And I came across this gentleman, I'm gonna call him gentleman, for lack of a better term. Um, his name is Brian Simmons. He is the author of the Passion Translation of the Bible. Oh. Seems simple enough, right? Yeah, amen. Sure, Passion Translation of the Bible, no problem. He claims to have received a new divine revelation that has given him special authority and insight to translate the Bible and to reveal new scripture in the coming days. New scripture. Huh? Interesting. He claims that God is giving him divine downloads. Yeah, that's what he said, downloads, on how to translate the gospel. He changed certain texts because according to him, that's not how God intended it to be. So for all these years, the Bible's been wrong according to him. Okay. All right, no problem. He also claims that he was taken in a dream to heaven's divine library, where he was told that he can take, I don't remember if it was two or three books, but he, he had access to two or three books that God was gonna give him. They can bring it back with him. Now, in this same story or in the same scene, he also says that while he was in the library in heaven, might I remind you, he saw a book that caught his attention because it was titled John 22. Now, if that doesn't sound strange, there is no 22nd book of John. It finishes at 21. He says that he wanted that book so badly that he thought of stealing it in heaven, in the divine library. He's having thoughts of stealing. Okay. Yes, admitting to wanting to steal from God is what he said. But in heaven, he, said, he states that in heaven, your thoughts are played out over a loudspeaker so everyone else can hear what you're thinking as well. <laughs> So, right, so like in a department store, you know, like when you used to get lost and they used to say it over the loudspeaker? Yeah, that's, he said that that's, your thoughts are played over the loudspeaker like that. The absurdity of this man's claims are beyond comprehension. But the scary thing is that he has received the support of popular leaders in the Christian community and a lot of Christian um, music leaders are flocking to this man in droves. Now we all know that the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 22, I warn everyone who hears the prophetic word in this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add him to the plagues 
described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the word in this prophetic book, God will take his share in the tree of life and in the holy city described in this book. This is just one egregious example of false prophets of today. And we know that there's many. You know, and this is just one example. And to me, just reading that one verse in Revelation would lead you to just completely dismiss what this man is saying. But he's receiving these downloads from heaven to give us a new version of scripture. Adam. But again, this is a sign of the times that we're living in. We see in the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 11, that there will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilence. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. When we hear of earthquakes happening around the world, it almost doesn't even faze us anymore. You know, is it because it rarely occurs on our side of the world? No, I don't think that's why. I feel that it doesn't phase us because it seems to be happening more and more and more and more. And because it happens more and more and more, we're desensitized to it, you know? According to statistics, there have been 9,000 970 total earthquakes this year alone. And we still have four months left in the year. Now, while there hasn't been a significant change in the amount of earthquakes year over year, there has been an increase in the magnitude of the earthquakes. And a little quick side note on earthquakes. This is some information that I found to be meaningful to, to the signs of the times. Many don't know this, but when earthquakes happen, it disrupts the Earth's rotation on its axis, which in turn causes the Earth to rotate slightly faster. And that causes us to lose microseconds in the day. So, now I don't know about you, but to me, time passes by like this now. When I was younger, the summer months used to last an eternity. Now, granted, I, you know, I was a lot younger. I didn't have so many responsibilities, and I didn't have to go to work, and I didn't have to do this. And I sat around at home and hung out. But even then, you know, a week felt like a year. You know, but let's be realistic. Now in these days, you know, school ends, and like five minutes later, we're shopping for back to school. And three minutes after that, they're back in class. I mean, that's just how I feel. But this, too, is a sign of the times. Now, the earth is screaming out that its creator is close. The verse also refers to famine and pestilence. And we are seeing an increase in the world. In, in, we're seeing an increase in worldwide famines. And um, I'm sorry, we're, we're seeing a worldwide growth in famine. We're seeing people starving in the streets at an alarming rate, you know, and, and for, for one, I don't think it's because of a lack of resources. I don't always think that it's because there's no food. I just think that it's, you know, these resources are being kept from the people, you know, and it's sad to see. It is, it is really sad to see. We're also seeing an increase in pestilence, right? New diseases are sprouting up all over the world every day. We're even still feeling the effects of COVID. Every day there's a new strand, every day there's a new version, every day there's something else, you know, and, and, and it's, it's not surprising, you know, because that's what the word says. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're seeing, like I said, we're seeing different strains being discovered every day. You know, there's an increase of cancer and it's just running, you know, through the world like a wrecking ball. There's an increase in heart disease, you know. It, all these things are at an all-time high. You know, I know when I was younger, and I, I'll reference that a lot today. When I was younger, yeah, you know, people were sick and things happened, but it just didn't seem like it was at such an alarming rate. Like, it, it almost seems like everyone you know is passing away from cancer or passing away Amen. from something, you know. And before it was a lot of, well, he died of old age, and, you know, he just, he 
died of being lonely or he died, you know, whatever, something like that. But it was hardly ever just so much disease, you know? I don't know. But again, that too is a sign of the last days. Now we see in 2 Timothy um, 3, 1 through 5, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. Now, who here hasn't faced tough times? You know, but let's be realistic. I mean, doesn't it seem like these tough times just keep coming up and up and up and just more and more and more and we're continuously suffering as a people? I don't know. To me, it just seems like something new comes up every day. You know, and it's just like, there's just something new every day. You, you pass one thing, and here comes the next. You know, the verse also says, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen, to conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. And we are to avoid such people. Now let's be real. A lot of what's going on in the world is because we as a people, as a race, have become all those things previously mentioned. Lovers of self. It's all about me and everyone else comes second. It's just how it is. Lovers of money, doing anything and everything for a buck. Mm. Proud, arrogant, abusive, all the things that I mentioned before. Now, remember earlier when I mentioned about famines and people going hungry in the streets? I'm sure in some places there is a lack of resources, because um, it's been like that for a long time. But in most places, the governments are starving their own people to maintain control. They are ruthless in their pursuit of power and dominance. I know from self-experience that there are still really good people in this world. But there are certainly way more evil-rooted people in this world than ever. It's just a fact. It's a reality. Amen. The things we hear about these days the heinous acts of violence committed against children, women, the elderly, the destruction of the family and its values, the tyrannical uprising of the LGBT community, or LGBTQ+, right? I don't wanna offend anybody. <laughs> you know, I don't wanna get canceled. You know, and all of its wicked behaviors this uprising of the this up, there is an uprising on the there's an uprising within people um, that want to attack the church and its holy standards. But this too is all a sign of the times. The Lord is coming and will raise his church from all of these abominations. Now, my last point, I I know. It's quick. But my last point is the one I want to not focus the most on, but I think gives us a really great understanding of, of the sign of the times. So in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the later times some will depart from the faith and devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Now this is my own take on this point. This, this, is, this is what I feel that God gave me um, over the last couple of days to really focus on and to talk. It's just, hear me out. Now I'm not sure about you, um, but when I was younger, I never heard about the presence, right, of aliens, UFOs, <laughs> right? I mean, yes, we had our movies and our shows, you know, E.T. E.T. was great, right? Great 80s classic. We had ALF, the TV show, right? Yeah. Great show. But to me, that was all make-believe, right? All make-believe. You know, and, and in those days, in my younger days, you know, 30 plus years ago, if, you have, if anyone ever heard you speaking of UFOs and, and things like that, 
you were labeled a nutcase. <laughs> you know, look at this guy, is he crazy? And no one really took you serious. But you fast forward now to 2023, which is the day that we live in now. In the last month or so, the United States government has had congressional hearings where they basically admitted to having contact with UFOs, right? Recovering UFOs from crash sites, even recovering UFO biology, biology. So UFO, the, bio, the biological presence of UFO creatures, things, I don't know. But this is our United States government admitting to it. And not only our governments, but the governments of the world are all admitting to now having contact with UFOs. Now hear me out, hear me out. The enemy is the father of lies, right? He's the father of deceit and confusion. No, I don't believe in aliens, but I do however find it fascinating how now, after all of these years, the world's government and leaders are admitting that yes, in fact, aliens are real. The people have made claims to seeing things, right? And some are seeing things in the world of the, power, of, of the paranormal, right? They're seeing things, you see this, you see that. Okay. We know that the word says that we fight against spiritual beings all the time. And I, for one, I, for one, think that what people are seeing is not an alien race. It's not ghouls and goblins, right? That's not what we're seeing. What I think, or what I feel that what we are witnessing is the manifestation of demonic presences. And the enemy is using all of this to distract and confuse the masses, right? Now, I heard a theory, this is something I shared with you. I heard a theory about this Right? And it said that the world is being prepared to accept the belief that when the rapture happens, oh. it can all be explained away by aliens. <laughs> it was an alien takeover. Where did the people go? Aliens. It's simple. Aliens took them, not Jesus. And people will be so gullible that they will accept this explanation because they've been conditioned and groomed by the world's governments. You see where you see where this is all going? It's not just a coincidence that all of a sudden they're like, yeah, yeah, aliens are real. <coughs> this is real, that's real, you know. Again, like I said earlier, the enemy is the father of lies, deceit, confusion, and he's using this to confuse the people. I, I've seen many people that I used to go to church with when I was living in the city that now talk to me about these odd things and I'm just like, what are you, what are you guys talking about? You know, and then they're like, yeah, but the, the government says it's real, this, that. And I'm just like, well, you grew up with the same beliefs that I grew up with, like, where did you stray? You know, where, where'd you go wrong? You know, and, and it's because it's becoming so popularized and so shoved in our faces that it's becoming normal. You know, and again, a tactic of the enemy to confuse the people. Because while we're here thinking about aliens, ghouls, goblins, the gnomes, all these things, yeah. we're, we're now focusing on Christ. And because we're not focusing on Christ, our faith is waving. You know, and, and that leads to people straying from the gospel. That you would never think, oh my gosh, that guy left the gospel and he's doing what now? You know, and it's, it's, it's scary, you know. But again, these are all signs of the times. Now, these couple of things that I spoke about today, well, it wasn't a long sermon, it wasn't a long preaching, it wasn't a long um, dialogue. You know, we've covered a few, just a few of the things that the word says are signs of the times, you know. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom, right? It's not all doom and gloom. Because while the world loses its grip on humanity and its values, the church grows stronger and stronger in its faith. All these signs, while sad and deplorable, all lead to the return of the Messiah. Amen. And just like Pastor Doug says, we win at the end. Amen. Right? If you read the rest of the book, 
You get past the signs, you get past the sadness, the, the trauma, all this. There is victory for us at the end. Amen. You know, and, and again, that's where we need to be focused on. Let's not lose our focus on all these other random things that the world is providing, that the world is giving us, that the enemy is shoving in our faces. Let's focus on Jesus. Amen. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Praise the Lord. And as a church, as a people, as God's people, let's continue to hold on to our core and faith. Do your best to share the gospel with everyone that you can. Our Savior is coming, and it's going to happen a lot sooner than we think. Amen. Now, God bless you all. Thank you for your time. I know it was quick, like I said. But um, to summarize and to wrap it up, you know, I, like I said, I've watched a lot, of, a lot of shows, a lot of documentaries, a lot of videos, a lot of this, a lot of that. And um, I had somebody ask me, why do you watch these things? You know, like, aren't you Christian? Like, why are you watching videos on aliens and UFOs and this, that? And I said, well, first of all, I find it fascinating, right? Like, I, I like to think, you know, outside of the box a little bit. Um, and I've always explained, you know, I don't, I don't believe in the presence of aliens and this, that, and the other. But like I said in, in, in the message, you know, I do believe, right, I believe in Christ. And because I believe in Christ, I, I believe that there's a, a, an evil, right, that wants to confuse. He wants to take us away from the true gospel and present us these various, uh, you know, new downloads and new versions and new this. You know, and it's, as a people, we need to stick together, come together, and have our faith grow more and more every day. Let's get back into the Word. You know, let's... Let's get back into our Bibles. Let's get back into what we know to be the truth. Because there is a lot being presented to us that can stray us away from the true gospel. You know, I, I look at my son as an example. He's nine years old. And he is, there is new information and new this, new that, just fed to him every day. Well, he'll come and he'll talk to me about stuff. And I'm like, no, Logan, that's not how it is. This is what the word says. Or this is what God says about that, you know. You know, he he understands that, you know, his mother and I are separated, and he understands, but he still doesn't understand why the family is broken, right? He doesn't understand why I live in one place, and they live in another place, or he'll stay with me one week, and he stays in another place, you know, and, and he's led to believe that this is normal, right? He's led to believe, hey, it's cool, but it's not. You know, and again, I go back to the enemy wanting to destroy our family values, the, all those core values that we grew up with, you know, and it's, that's why I say, let's get back in the word, let's get grounded, because there's so much information out there available now, you know, before, if I wanted to look up a Bible verse, I had to look in the back of the book, the concordance, you know, and figure out where this verse was, it takes me two seconds to find where I'm looking for. Information is readily available to us now, you know, but that's not always a positive thing. You know, there's a lot of misinformation being fed to us, you know, so let's get grounded back in the word. Let's get grounded back in our core beliefs. And I think that, uh, I think that'll lead us to more positive days, you know, and like I said before, you know, I know this message might've been a little strange talking about aliens and UFOs and this, that, and the other, but it's a reality. It's the world that we live in. It's what's being fed to us. It's what's being given to us, you know, and like I said, a lot of people that I know are being led astray, but I know that us here in the green assembly of God, right, that's not us because we're, we're grounded, we're rooted in the word of God. Um, Amen. With that, I thank you for the time. I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your, um, for your love and your kind words, you know, and I thank every, each and every one for this opportunity. That's it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I promise, the more I do this, the, the longer I'll get. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> <laughs>